worse than normal. Alright. Am I still alive? Alright, so this is Wind Waker. I hope you enjoy it. It's a, it's a hot new speed game. It has very little attention. So, I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna start from new save, because fuck the normal rules. Three, two, one, go. This is uh, The Legend of Zelda, The Song of Tyrim. And this game <clears throat> has a lot of cool speed strats, and there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's going to start pretty quick. So normally in this game, you can like save and quit anywhere. And when you load back up, you'll be in the exact same spot. However, uh, for some reason, save quit while rolling, it just kind of defaults you to a like a default position depending on, depending on the island you're on. So I'm going to immediately roll and save quit and load back up. And that's going to put me out of the tutorial so I don't have to go through anything that the tutorials are lame and slow and also it has this really cool thing with uh, sheep here sheep you can just kind of you know go flying with this talk to me fuck you tor fucking tor so with sheep you can just kind of you know go sky high and it's totally fine also you can just pause to uh stop any falling momentum and also, just... I'm stuck? I'm softlocked? What? That's new. What? Huh? What? I can't even escape. Huh. All right, so this is Wind Waker, and I'm going to, uh... <sighs> so, a uh, second soft lock of the marathon? <laughs> I'm just going to move on. Right. Get the... Okay, I have hand glider. Uh, now the sheep is not cooperating. I got, like, two beautiful launches by the sheep, and it looked amazing, and now I just can't get it. All right. Come on. There we go. Right, so I was supposed to make a hang glider and glide over here. Just pretend the last minute didn't happen. Anyway, I get this key, and now we're over here. And so the ob objective of this first island is to eventually go into the dungeon, and you pick up plans for a raft so you can build the raft and get on out of here. And it turns out the, uh, the back door for that is just right over here, and you can hit the switch through the wall and open it up. It's fine if that guy... So now I have the plans for the raft. And conveniently, there's a whole bunch of crafting materials right here. And then I'm just gonna death warp out. Candy fire. Ah! Ooh! Ooh! And, uh, yeah. We've already gotten everything that we need from this island, so we can just immediately build a raft and leave. And now we get some nice comfy sailing. So the objective of this, uh, there's three close islands that we can get to with the raft. If we try to go to the big ones, we get eaten by a shark with this tiny ass boat. So we need uh, plans for a bigger boat. We need a toolbox and we need a shipbuilder from these three islands. You know, rule three, you always need three things. That's what we're gonna get first so we can actually make it. The overall objective is basically your dad and all the other dude vikings went off into this place, which is the Vale. They all disappeared and haven't come back, so we're gonna go save them because we're a cool guy or something. We're achiever, something, something. And the things that spawn in while you're sailing are random. These are just boxes that give you one of every item. They're not all that useful. 
Uh, hopefully I'll get some cooler stuff later on. Once I load in this area, I can just jump off and go meet our friendly shark that I was just talking about. And he's going to conveniently eat us, which will put us much closer on the island that we than uh, it would have been. Good. Some minecrafting. Prepare this staircase since we have to use it a few times so it's faster than going all the way around. That's the quest NPC. We can just kind of ignore her. We don't really need to talk to her. Oh, okay. It ate. Jump. Physics in this game are atrocious, so bear with me if I miss a bunch of jumps. We're going to take this part, like, quite safely. You can actually make this jump, but I'm just going to be safe and make a hang glider. So the key that I picked up on the first island, I can just use on this door. Because, why not? Here. Now I have the speed. Speed boots. The speed boots are exactly what you expect. They make you go fast. First, a little thing where you need to uh, there before the door closes. And now we have this incredibly stupid section where these panels fall down, and sometimes they just kind of instantly fall, and you just are screwed no matter what. But I got there first try. This game is easy. And just like that, we already have first thing, which I think is the toolbox. And we just real quit out of here. Back at the docks. Now, there's fast travel in this game, but only when you're on a boat. So I'm going to real quick make a raft. So I can fast travel to the back to the middle island. Shoutouts to having the hang glider out while you're there. Going to make another raft. Whoop. If you mix mouse and keyboard with menuing, then you just you just end up having a bad time. Oh, I didn't get the uh hang glider this time. Oh well. And next bit is failing. So you may be wondering how I found this uh little indie title known as Wind Waker. Uh, there's a bunch of us that do this thing called Run Invalid, and what it is is this uh, routing competition. We find a game that nobody's speedrun, preferably nobody's like even routed or glitch, glitch hunted at all. We break off into teams, and we have like a couple month long competition where we route the game and we make a segmented run. And at the end, we compare the segmented run to see who's faster. And we picked two games: this game and another crappy horror game called Solarix. And we were going to present it at ESA. And holy crap, this is a lot of debris. Alright, we got there. I'm just gonna quit out for this one instead of getting a shark. You mean because it's slightly faster? And, uh... So... The other game was really boring. And instead, we just did this, and we showed it at ESA, and it was a grand old time. And this is what came of it. So... I'm gonna grab a sword because I'll need one later. And I need to get into the middle of this area. Normally it's like it's a really long dungeon, you have to go all the way around, you have to go down inside of the island, but instead I'm gonna use this pot, and this pot is gonna get me really high. I need to get really high from this pot. That's not high. Sorry, Momo, I failed you. This is, you know basically random come on pot oh, this, this pot is not kicking in I ain't feeling this pot this pot is not getting me high here for some reason like this island is a bit weird the ground seems to behave weirdly so you can just kind of get high except not work come on pot me high pot. There we go. What setup? This game doesn't have setups, Momo. This is not a game that you develop setups for. 
Alright, so repair this thing and hope that the crab not bully us. Please no bully, Mr. Crab. You don't bully me. Alright, he didn't bully me. If he hits me, then it knocks me out of the conversation. I have to go through it again. But we managed to get through. I'm not going to put it on the flat side. The flat side is a pain in the ass to get it on. Again. Our way back to Borja. This is actually really annoying here. If I go too far right, that guy talks to me. If I go too far left, I latch onto the ladder. You have to kind of go perfectly right in between the two. And we're off to the third of the starter islands. <sighs> okay, I shouldn't look there. This, that's not lag reduction strats. I'm sure that matters in this game. So the different things that can spawn, uh, you saw the boxes that give you resources. That's a purple fruit that just hurts you. This is debris that will slow you down really hard if you go into it. It's also barrels that when you hit them will give you a speed boost. Obviously you want barrels all day and all night. There's a barrel. Give me that barrel all day and all night. Oh man. Oh, the double, well, the second barrel will despawn because the island loaded in fortunately oh man it spawned another one thank you what a based game so normally you go up here and the guy like takes all your resources and runs away and you have to like do some things to unlock this uh bridge but that's slow. Instead, what we're going to do is just kind of roll on up here. I'm going to go in here and then just kind of go through this wall. There's like a certain way to do this. It's a little bit. Come on. Get through. Get your little legs through. There you go. And we can just swim into the load zone. Yep. Right. Make some speed boots. So this is supposed to be a stealth section. See all the doors slam shut because the guys have detected me. Uh, hello? No. What are you doing? Hiram, please. And that door has got... It's got like a blue wall that covers it. You're supposed to go all the way to the top and smash a crystal to open it. But since this guy shot the door when the door was closed, it just kind of despawns that for whatever reason. We're not really sure why, but it just kind of despawns it when the door is closed. So we can just kind of... Oh yeah, this is also supposed to be a boss fight, but we can just kind of ignore it. And then just go over here and we have the plans for the Mad Goat. And do a nice little dump. And get on out of here. What's Skyrim? I've never heard of that. So, once more. The Boryach. And now we have all the materials for the big boat. So that's what we're going to do. And now we have a big boat. So there's this thing I can do in this game called a, like a roll jump. Where if you jump at a certain time during your roll, uh, you get a little boost and you you jump really far. So I can do that in a few places to over like climbing that ladder and stuff like that. 
But we have the big boat, so we don't have to fear the friendly shark anymore. And we can make our way to these big islands. So from this one, you end up getting a spell placed on you, which lets you pass through the mist covering the veil that screws over everybody. And then in these two, you get like uh, a, a bell that lets you navigate a maze and uh, a, a code that you have to put in to open a door. But it turns out those are always fixed, so if you just memorize them, there's no reason to ever go get them. So we just don't have to do those islands at all. Sometimes debris will spawn, like, in your boat, and you just can't possibly avoid it, and it's awful. If I end up actually running into debris, you'll see why it's so terrible. Oh, a barrel. This save and quit saves, like, almost no time. Here I'm going to craft a sword because I'll need one in a little bit. So this island has a mechanic where uh, like every couple minutes wind blows and it like pushes you off the island. If you're on a bridge you kind of get screwed over. But as long as I do everything right it shouldn't really matter at all. And also, when the guy made the boat for me, he also gave me plans for the windsurfer. Oh, also, you can just kind of roll through. You're not supposed to be able to. The, the windsurfer is supposed to be used on the desert island, which we don't go to, and you know, surf some wind. But it has some pretty creative other uses that are not exactly intended. I'm going to wait for the wind to stop blowing, because I'm not entirely sure if it actually matters or not. I'm going to, like, push this wall, and that's just going to ride straight up that wall and skip that. And you can also just walk past that person to the right, and they don't talk to you. Pretty convenient. There's some epic combat. All right, we won. Work. Wind surfer. took that first one pretty safely whatever all right now we have this spooky scary forest where we absolutely must stay on the lighted path or else terrible terrible things will happen terrible terrible things will happen if we stray off the path oh no all right we got there these buttons make absolutely no sense i don't i will never understand them sometimes they just don't work and Fuck if I know why. I do it the same way every time, and it just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And now once again, we whoops, absolutely must not stray off the path. Right way. Cannot stray off the path or else terrible, terrible things will happen. Alright, we made it. Now we have the dungeon portion of this island. Scary skeleton. Right. Take this there, open some doors. And now we're gonna see the real power of the windsurfer. I'm gonna go over here. And right about here. This way. And then make a windsurfer. That's going to place it inside of the door, and I'm going to grab it from the other side and just go straight through that door. Here, make a hand glider. Some basic platforming. I 
camera. Okay. These are crushers. They're actually the worst thing in the game. Because you saw there, they didn't pause when they got to the end. They're supposed to pause when they get to the end. How much stuff do I have? 23. I'm going to do some grinding for materials here. I'm gonna do one. Can't exact. I think it's 35 that you need. Grinded for materials. Now I'm gonna make another windsurfer. Push into this wall. Forward slightly. In. It's wrong. Make a hand glider. And we're gonna jump and then glide over here out of bounds and end up back here. And this thing happens to include increased crafting speed, which is pretty handy. More stompers. Whoa, the stompers. And make on. Make our way out here. And now we have an epic boss fight. That, even though I did it. Uh, what? How did I get turned around? It spawned me facing the wrong direction. Very confusing. For some reason, you can't skip this cutscene. I don't know why. So, this boss, uh, you're supposed to break four crystals and an attacker or attack her after every crystal. But I'm going to hopefully two-cycle her if she behaves. So her own attack will break the crystal. And then it turns out that running out of stamina and attacking as soon as you have stamina is the exact right timing to stunlock her. Like, I'm just mashing click and it's perfect timing. Uh, sometimes, though, she can just kind of decide to not be stunlocked anymore. Hi, Sabu. And I'm not entirely- like, sometimes if she, like, bumps into one of those things, she'll, like, forget to be stunlocked, and it won't work anymore. And then other times she'll- just for no reason, will just start blocking all your attacks. Oh, she landed immediately, that's not good. I might not two-cycle her now. She usually stays up in the air for, like, a couple seconds. He just has to not decide to not be stunlocked. Okay. Fine, I can... What? It's fine. So she decided not to be stunlocked, but she had like one hit left in her, so it was fine. No, that's not true, Momo. Sometimes she'll just decide not to be stunlocked anymore when she's in the middle of nothing. So this guy goes and tells us to go find the real person, because that was actually an uh, imposter. Go find the real Zamatara, which so happens to be back on Hamama. That was a pretty good loading screen. That just happens sometimes. The loading screen, like, forgets to appear, and then it just renders stupid looking things. So now there's one Tara, two Tara, three Tara. That's the one we actually want. And she'll cast a spell on us that'll let us get through the fog. What value? So now that we have that, we don't actually need the other two things for the main quest, so we can just go straight to the ending area. And this happens to be the closest place to go from, so we can just sail immediately. Last uh, ocean sailing section. I'm 
nice comfy sailing section. Mind you, this is uh, a valuethon, which is raising members for raising raising members for money of team value. Yeah, let's just go with that. Uh, every donation that you can spare is appreciated. We are we do have uh, four runners with games at AGDQ. We would love to make it there. One of which is this run right here. So if you want to see the Zelda Wind Waker live at AGDQ, donate. Nice little barrel there at the end. Oh, and we got another barrel in here. Sick. Pretty rare. So there's the maze. You're supposed to go there with the, uh... The bell thing that you get and it, it guides you through. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna do that. That sounds lame. Instead, I'm gonna go over here. Crash into this wall. I'm gonna make a safety save. Because... Bad things happen. I mess this up. So I'm going to go over here. That did not work. I'm going to roll jump off of it and make a raft while falling. You can't craft while you're in water. Oh, that didn't work. I have enough from a. For I do. This is fine. I can just make one here. Oh. Okay, this is not my normal setup. I'm not sure the positioning. There we go. So I make one side and I hopefully get it. This is like, okay, I'm gonna have to reload the other save. This clip is like very specific and I didn't practice it at all. And I can't remember the timing for it even slightly. I, it keeps getting pushed out, and I'm not sure why. This should be fine. I'm confused why this is not working. This is, like, easily the hardest part of the run, because this clip is, like, extremely specific. Luckily, you can make a backflip. So not too bad. No, not the stone mace. Sometimes it also likes to double your inputs when you navigate the menu. That's also a pretty good prank. But alright, we got there. I was just pausing too early. I needed to go further forwards. Anyway, so... There's the whole maze. It actually takes forever to go through that maze like even though you'll be in the big you'll be in the big boat so you'll be a lot faster than this raft it still takes forever to go through this maze but we can just kind of clip out and go around the side of it it is significantly nice so this is the last sailing section of the game Comfy uh, sailing, watching the everything go by. We get to just wonder at this raft design, where it's just designed to completely soak you. Why? Why? Why would you do it like this? Why would you just want to get completely soaking wet?
Oh, we're almost there. Once we get through this ending, we'll be at the uh, epic final boss fight. And I know you're just like, what chops? You said you were going to confront the end boss of Dishonored, and then you just ran past him. Surely you're not going to do exactly the same thing here. To which I say, hey, so uh, there's the um, uh, the door that you're supposed to use the code to get past. Uh, and here's like a big empty room that you just have to walk through and it takes forever. And we're just going to sail past it. And you're like, but Chops, I was asking you and I'm just like, hey, donate to the stream and maybe I'll acknowledge your question. Yeah. Big empty room. It's kind of dumb. There's like ghosts that can talk to you, but it's just a big empty room. Oh, there goes the raft without us. Pick up some more materials. Make our last speed boots. Say goodbye, speed boots. The big epic boss fight gets summoned. And we got good luck with the debris. The debris can sometimes spawn right here and like... Oh my god. Oh my god! I got stuck! I couldn't move! Are you kidding me? I've never gotten stuck on that thing. I've always just like walked around it without any trouble. Alright, that... that is extraordinarily bad. Now I'm gonna lose so much time to him shooting and pushing me backwards. And no! I've never not made that with a roll jump. All right, so, oh my god, and I got stuck in the pushing animation. For fuck's sakes. It's not god debris. The debris spawns in that location like 80% of the time. Okay, the boss is doing things. Hi, boss. We're just gonna go ahead and make a hang glider. Go down here. I'm gonna take this very safely and like roll around all of these gaps because it can very easily eat your jump and you'll just be screwed. And okay, we're fine. I just had to check something real quick. But here's a big ass lock door. I'm going to just kind of not enough. Let's kind of do this. And we're just gonna kind of do this. And we're just gonna kind of do this. Later, nerd, get ready for time. And... Time. We did it, we rescued dad and stuff. Tyron found his father there in the dark, more helpless than he'd ever seen his father before. The men all gathered around Tyron to ask how he came to be. Hey, I've gotten screwed there before, but I've never gotten screwed by that piece of the boss. Met, the obstacles he'd overcome. He saw his father's approving smile blink in the darkness. All right, 3227. Wow, that was fucking terrible. Son's hand and said, "Let's go home." Uh, still underestimate though. All right. So, world record? Pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, world record. Why not? Some will change so, uh, you may be wondering about the category in this game. It's a any percent, no credit skip. And you're just like, but Chops, what is any percent? Well, we'll see in a second when I spawn in here after this cutscene. Uh, after the credits, or this is the credits, you spawn in this little world. And you can, like, you know, play around. You got this little windsurfer and stuff. And, uh, go over here and get eaten by a land shark. Um, and then, oh, you actually launched me upwards. And then there's this thing in the middle. It normally doesn't spawn you so goddamn far away when you get eaten by a land shark. Good waste of time. I'm gonna go up here. Get our friendly little sheep, and we're gonna, gonna we're gonna go on an adventure. See this load zone. Goes back to Borgia. 
And this actually teleports you right back to the start. Start the game right out here. Just a little bit. And I immediately clipped out. But it turns out if you go back behind the waterfall and you look up, that area, that black area up there is actually a load zone. And if you can just go up into that load zone, it'll actually play the final cutscene and put you into the credits island. And how do you do that, you ask? Well, you can't really clip or do like a geometry boost very easily right here at all. So if you're if you're good old Savusuka, you you go over there, you do part of the tutorial to get the crate, and then you build a crate, and then you build another crate, and then and then you just like keep fucking building crates, and then you build more crates, and you just keep fucking building crates until you've got like fucking fifty of them stacked up, and then you climb up there and you jump into the load zone and you beat the game. That's any percent. It's certainly something. But yeah. You should uh you should all go watch the any percent run when you have a free moment. Okay, after this marathon is over, because don't leave yet. Please don't leave. Still not done.